the Lord showed me that there were four spirits that had been loosed by the devil for the destruction of the church of the living God in this hour as a result, a direct cause and effect of what has happened in the raising up of this prayer army. God is raising up an army of people to counteract the hopeless situation that we're in right now nationally. I hope that you have not been duped, you have not been fooled into thinking that we're just going along in merry, merry land in America and we can continue the way we've been doing the last 40 years and exist as a society. I hope you're not such a fool. But if you have believed that everything's getting better and better in the world, I want to tell you something. It's not getting better and better. There is no way in the natural scope of things that we're going to defeat the drug problem in America. The war is over, and the drug lords have won unless something supernatural takes place. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Let me give you just a real graphic illustration. There's one police officer in Chicago for every 2,200 people. What am I saying? I'm saying what William Bennett said several weeks ago on national television. There is no way in this world that we're going to stop the drug trafficking, which, by the way, 90% of is coming through Miami where we're headed in November. And we've been advised by everybody that knows anything about where preachers ought to go. They say, don't go to Miami. Why? Because the demons down there are too strong. We can't get breakthrough down there. Well, I said, that's the very reason I'm going down there. You all understand what I just said? You see, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if it's big, little, somewhere in between. I'm not doing this ministry to look successful. The shadow of the cross is not falling on men so that they can look successful. The shadow of the cross is not falling over this United States of America in order that I can have a great career as a preacher. The shadow of the cross is falling to defy the power of sin and to defy the power of demon oppression, which right now is literally ruling over the major metropolitan areas of our nation, and most of God's people are still in Mary Maryland and haven't showed up yet for the battle. There's a war going on for the soul of our nation today. And if you don't believe that, ask yourself a question. Is there a war going on for your soul? And multiply that 300 million times, and you are face to face with what's going on. But God's people called by His name have got to rise up right now and go to war. You say, well, Larry, I'm tired of hearing about all this go to war stuff. I'll stop talking about it when we go to war. God's got an army. And up to this point, they've been kind of quiet. They've been kind of out of sight kind of out of mind, but I declare in Jesus' name that in this decade that we're now getting ready to enter into, God is going to raise up a mighty fighting force in our land. Do you think God is going to allow the drug lords that are literally pawns of demonic strongholds to take this land without a fight? Now, there may be some of you here that would just let it happen. But, folks, I want to tell you something about me and my house. We are not going to let it happen. And God being my helper, and He is, we're going to do something about it in the name of Jesus Christ. You say, well, what are we going to do about it? Well, first of all, we're going to get our house in order. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, get ready now because this is going to hurt so good. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? 
For you are the temple of the living God, as he has said. I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. Do not touch the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be your father, and you will be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, now look at verse, chapter 7, verse 1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. If you stand up today at the end of this service, and in just a moment we're going to stand up, and you rebuke the spirits of uncleanness that I will mention in just a moment in this message, and you have not resolved in your heart, you have not set your will against uncleanness in your own heart, you're actually invoking demons on your life. I'll say that again. If you stand up and say, I rebuke you, devil, when at the same time you're agreeing with him in your lifestyle, you're actually saying, come on, devil, have some of me. But if today, now listen to me carefully, we will stand individually as families, as a church staff, and as a church family, and defy the strong man of uncleanness, then he has no choice but to leave us. We can bind him, but we got to decide if we want him to go. We got to decide if we want him out. You've got to make up your mind if you want that demon gone. If you don't want him out of your life, don't pray with me today. But if you're at a place in your life where you're ready to consider the promises of God and really set your face like a flint to come out from among them and be separate and not touch the unclean thing, I tell you there's a mighty reward for the holy. I'll just tell you what the reward is just in one word. The reward is joy. Now, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, therefore having these promises. What promises? He says, now consider the promises. Folks, I want to tell you something. We serve a God who is glad to reward his people. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's a rewarder. Somebody real holy the other day came up to me and said, oh, pious. Well, brother, I don't want any rewards. I said, well, give me your rewards then. Praise God. How many of you believe he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him? But as I noticed this passage of Scripture, it said, considering these promises, therefore having these, what were the promises? The first promise was that he said, I will dwell with them. That's the presence of God being at home in your life. How many believe that's a pretty good promise to have him dwell with you? What promise? He said, I'm not only going to dwell with them, I'm going to walk with them. How many of you know if God walks with you, you don't have to be afraid of anybody? Consider these promises. He says, not only am I going to dwell with you, not only am I going to walk with you, he said, I'm going to be your God. The reference there is to, God, is to a God who is able to do anything. He's not only the one present, he's not only the one walking in power, he's also the provider God. He's the one that's there to provide everything you have need of before you ask him. Not only did God say, these are my promises. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to dwell with you. I'm going to be provider God. But he said, and this is the best part for me. He said, I'm also going to be a father to you. And you're going to be my sons. And you're going to be my daughters. This whole world today is looking for a father. The whole world is looking for a father. Somebody to be a real father. And as much as I love my dad on this earth, there's no father like the everlasting Father. Most of the people I know that suffer from 
anxiety, depression, or some form of insecurity need to be secured by a father. My dear ones today, hear me as a shepherd speaking to a flock. God Almighty is the only one who can secure you as father. There's nothing else in this world that can secure you. Now the Bible says, considering these promises, really what are the promises? Well, thank God for all of the blessings of this life. Thank God for all of his blessings. But hear me, the real blessing and the real reward is God himself. The Lord spoke to Abraham and he said, Abraham, I am your exceeding great reward. Everything else he adds to us are massively insignificant compared to his abiding presence, compared to the joy of the Lord, compared to the peace that passes all understanding. There's nothing to be compared in this world with knowing him as provider God, as knowing him as present God, as knowing him as father God. He is your reward. I want to know something today. What will you sacrifice for the presence of God? What in this world is worth the presence of the living God? That's a big question. You need to answer it. Because the word is very clear here. He said, considering these promises, the fact that I'm going to be present with you, I'm going to be powerful with you, I'm going to be personal with you, I'm going to provide everything you need. He said, considering these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness or uncleanness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now, did you notice it didn't say, let God cleanse you? Come on now, look at the Bible, 2 Corinthians 7, 1. What does it say? It says, let us therefore, considering these promises, that God is going to be your reward. Listen, I just wish on everybody one great blessing Jesus Christ real in your life not a religion you're trying to manipulate some way to get you a little squirt of peace every now and then but a rich full abiding relationship with the living God that's the cry of this pastor's heart for all of you why is that my cry that's my cry today because that's the only thing that is worth living for. That's the only thing that sustains me today is one thing, and that's the presence of the living, everlasting, wonderful counselor, mighty God, my heavenly Father. Do you love him today? He said, having these promises, notice, he said, let us cleanse ourselves. So many times we sit around saying, God, cleanse me. God, take this away from me. God, I want you to do this. But there are some things in this life that you've got to decide for yourself. You see, you were not born as an impassive automaton, a robot programmed by God, and you're going to be a certain way. No, no. God created you with the ability to choose. You know, God is merciful. And he gives a space of time for people to choose. But once that day of grace is over, that process of God dealing with his people, God speaking to his people, once that's done, then th there does come a point where only judgment will rectify the situation. God forbid that would be the case with you. But on the other side of obedience is joy. Dear God, can we understand that holy is happy and happy is holy. And if we ever can choose life to put away, listen now, the filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, then on the other side of obedience are great and precious promises for the children of God. What's he talking about when he says cleanse yourself from all the filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit? 
I don't think that I have to go into too much detail here today to describe to you the sins of the flesh. But I do want to say that the sins of addiction, you don't have to be addicted to anything but the ministry of the saints. If you are addicted today to drugs or you're addicted today to alcohol or you're addicted today to nicotine or you're addicted, and by the way, nicotine, they have proven now, medical science is as destructive and as uh, addicting a drug as any drug, as cocaine or anything else. If you are addicted today, when we get through with this service in just a moment, we're going to break those addictions off of people. The lust of the eyes, what we watch. Folks, if you've got cable television in your house, monitor what you watch and don't let stuff come into your eyes that defiles your heart. When it says cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh, the word uncleanness, all you've got to do is ask yourself this question. Ask yourself this question. Say to yourself, when anything comes at you, say, is this going to edify my spirit or is this going to destroy my spirit? Is this something that I'm taking into my eyes or into my ears that is going to defile my relationship with God? And if it defiles you, get rid of it. I want to pray for you on this Saturday night that the spirit of breakthrough will remain on your life and that the uncleanness of the world will be broken off your life. Let's pray together right now. Father, I believe for breakthrough in every one of my partners and all of those that are watching tonight. And I bind the spirit of uncleanness off you both now and tomorrow and for the rest of your life. I believe that uncleanness will not be a part of your life. Bless you in the name of Jesus. For the glory of God, I release a blessing on your life of God's wholesomeness and God's holiness in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask you tonight, all of you,